salutations my dearest friends my name is Samantha and today I'm going to be doing the new year booktuber tag hello how are you welcome or welcome back to my channel today I'm going to be doing a tag that Justin from Justin Reads Romance created I saw that she created a new booktube tag and I paused our video because I wanted to just go through the questions without like thinking of my answers and just kind of sit here and chill with you guys and do this tag with you. I love Jess and I love her channel. I'm so excited that she created this tag so I will leave her video and her channel down below. I know that Sam from Sam Reads a Little also posted this tag so it's kind of exciting because I was just sitting down at work writing down like my booktube goals, what videos I wanted to film in the next year, the content that I wanted to lean into and create and then this tag came and I was like perfect, awesome, let's go ahead and do it. First question is, what are you most excited about in 2023? Now, I'm assuming this is in general and not just about booktube, but I'm excited for traveling in 2023. I'm actually planning to go to a couple of book signings in 2023, which makes me so happy that I'm going to see all of my bookish friends. I have made so many friends here online. Because we met online, a lot of them live in different states, so I'm only able to see them maybe once or twice a year. So I'm so excited to reconnect with those people. I did go to some book signings in 2022, but it was the first time that I was like traveling like by myself. So I'm an extreme extreme introvert so I had a lot of anxiety like socializing at book signings with authors and with people that I met online and now because I kind of like got that over with this year I feel like 2023 I'm gonna be even more excited and that anxiety is just like not there. My family also has some family vacations coming up so that's really exciting. I'm also starting to like just prioritize my mental health. I mentioned it a little bit in my channel but I was in a very 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 low point like 2021 beginning of 2022. In 2022, I started regularly seeing a therapist, regularly taking medication um, for my endometriosis and all of this stuff, just really prioritizing my mental and physical health. And I'm really excited to go into 2023 still having that is do you have a goodreads challenge goal and why that number i do have a goodreads challenge goal and it's more so to keep track of what i'm reading i'm definitely not someone who really cares about how many books i'm reading a month or a year or a week the number that i've always kind of stuck with is 100 i feel like that's a really even good number i almost always go over that number my very first year on booktube and when i started reading again i set my goodreads challenge for 12. i was like if i could read one book a month i'm so stoked and happy about that which obviously <laughs> um, I read more than one book a month that year I had set my Goodreads goal for 12 and I ended up reading exactly 100 books so I'm like you know what I know I can read 100 books so I'm always just gonna make that my number so next list three five star predictions oh this is fun I ah my brain is blinking I can't it's, it's blinking <laughs> Oh my gosh, my brain was literally like blinking on any books that I'm excited for. Maybe I should have thought about my answers before. First one I'm really excited for is Can't Say Goodbye by Eden Finley. This is releasing January 25th. If you guys have watched some of my previous Vlogmas videos, I have been obsessed with Eden Finley's writing recently. So obsessed with their CU hockey series that they write with Sax and James. And that series is a bunch of male male hockey romances. And like when I tell you, I have given every single one in the series five stars. I've given every single one in the series five stars. And Finley just released the cover for their next book. It's called Can't Say Goodbye. Three people is on the cover, which means it's a polyamorous relationship. You guys know, you guys know my obsession with anything more than two people, polyamorous romances, why choose romances. Like I just want the more people, the better. And it's Eden Finley. Like, ugh. I'm so freaking excited for this one. All it says is who's ready to meet Brady and his men. I'm ready. Me. I'm so ready. The next one that I'm really excited to read is Iced Out by C.E. Reese. I think is how you pronounce the author's last name. I just feel in my bones that this is going to be a five stars. Like I feel it. I always say that I go through phases of reading, okay? I went through a historical romance phase. I went through like a wide shoes reverse harem stage. I went through a mafia romance stage. I am in my hockey romance era. I am. I am in my hockey romance era. No other sports, just hockey. And I cannot wait to read this one. This one is an enemies to lovers male male hockey romance, which is right up my freaking alley. And the next one I'm really excited for, and we don't even have a blurb. It's Highest Bitter by Sarah Kate and Madam by Sarah Kate. So Sarah Kate came out with the Salicious Players series this year. All went bonkers over praise. Okay, it has like a zaddy kink, ex boyfriend's dad trope, praise kink, ever. Loved it. I read all of the books in the series and I gave almost all of them five stars. 
obsessed. The way that she writes her steam and her kink but also like beautifully blends in this romantic connection with her characters amazing. I'm so excited to read anything she comes out with. I just have a feeling it's gonna be five stars even though we literally don't even have a synopsis. The next one is Games with the Orc by Catherine Moon. Now this one is kind of cheating because I've actually sort of read it or most of it. I follow Catherine Moon on Patreon and while she was writing this book she was like releasing chapter by chapter. I read it a while ago but not really like the whole finished edited book. This book our heroine just broke up with her boyfriend and she has like a little bit of a fantasy of being with an orc so she goes to like this Bordeaux and she basically hires a sex worker an orc to like fulfill all her fantasies in a cabin in a woods with her and it's so steamy and wonderful and I just know it's gonna be five stars. Next question is what genre, subgenre, or trope do you want to read more of? Hockey romances. Because I'm obsessed. I'm literally obsessed with hockey romances right now. Other than that, because I feel like I do read a lot of hockey romances, I don't read fantasy romances. I really truly do not. I was doing a video where I was like recommending random tropes and I was like picking tropes out of a bag and I got fantasy romance and my brain literally blinked out because I just don't read them. I read so many novellas. I like shorter steamier books. Also someone who's more character driven and I feel like fantasy romances are usually a little bit more plot based. They're always like ginormous like five six hundred pages and they just seem so daunting. So there's so many popular and I mean like popular fantasy romances that I have just completely ignored. Uh, so I kind of want to read more. Next is what trope do you think will be the most popular in 2023? Oh. I don't know. I feel like I never read what's popular. I feel like I'm so behind on trends because I'll get like super hyper obsessed with a random like very small trope like Omegaverse or something. What do I think will be popular? I feel like mafia romances are always really popular but I have a feeling like small town romances are gonna be super popular. A lot of booktubers like Jessica and Tori read a lot of small town romances like Catherine Cole and other authors like that so I just feel like that's going to be a trope that continues in 2023 which is awesome because I love a small town romance trope so yeah I definitely think mafia romances and small town romances are kind of going to be the two that are popular but who fucking knows because <laughs> the trends on book talk and YouTube they can go anywhere and like I said I get like hyper obsessed with like a very specific trope and just like block everything else out. And the three bookish goals for the year. First one kind of pertains to my YouTube channel. I want to be more consistent with my posting. Like I want to actually have a schedule. I tried very much tried in 2022 to have a schedule and I fell off like every single time. I did okay on vlogmas and posting videos every day. I find that if I have a theme like trope week or vlogmas or something where I have a theme of planned out videos I will definitely stick to that schedule so I'm just trying to have a schedule when it comes to uploading my bookish content. Number two I want to pick out some of my favorite authors and read their entire backlist which I know is a very daunting task. And then number three I want to actually write reviews on books. Holy moly, I am the worst, like the literal worst at writing reviews on Goodreads, on Amazon, on my Instagram. I just like read a book and give it a star rating and that's it. And the only reason I remember to give it a star rating on Goodreads is because sometimes I will go back at like my red list on Goodreads just to see like what books I want to talk about or if I'm doing a wrap up. It helps me like organize my book. I feel like that's never helpful to anyone who follows me on Goodreads because I'm just like giving star ratings but not explaining why. And also sometimes I'll forget like character names and plot points. So if I'm talking about a book I read earlier in the year and I'm doing a video on it, I forget. Like I just want to I want to write reviews. Next up is named three personal goals for the year. The first goal and I really feel like my only goal for 2023 is again what I mentioned in the beginning of my video is to focus on my mental health. I have prioritized pretty much everything else in my life other than my mental health leading up to this point. I feel like when I reached that low point in my life it was kind of like an awakening that I just need to prioritize my mental health and I feel like that's my main goal. Another personal goal, it's not really a goal but something I just want to do in 2023 is finish my tattoos. So I already have a couple of tattoos on me like really small ones. I have two bookish tattoos right now, a little strawberry and a beckonita ballerina which are two tattoos that are inspired by the Brutal Birthright series from Sophie Lark. I actually want a tattoo for each book in that series. So I need to get like four more tattoos to finish up that goal. And I kind of already have an idea what they're going to look like. So that is definitely something I plan to do in 2023. Next one, that's a personal one. And I say it every year. I just want to be more financially responsible. <laughs> 
I am such an impulse buyer, okay? It'll be like 2 o'clock in the morning and I will go and buy like 20 books that I don't need. Like 2023 in general is intention. Moving with, moving into life with more intention. The intention to take care of myself and with the intention to not purchase things I don't need. I say that every year and we'll see how it goes. What do you want to leave behind in 2022? I want to leave behind... Oh, I don't want to cry. I want to leave behind talking negatively to myself. Now, I know we have this self-doubt voice in our head all the time and it could be anything whether oh I don't look good in this shirt or, oh I don't have enough followers on YouTube so I'm not relevant or, oh I don't read enough books in a year so I'm not a real reader it's just so many things sometimes the way that we talk to ourselves throughout the day would never talk to our family members or our best friends that way thinking about that the other day when i talk to my younger sister or my mom or my best friend i'm uplifting them i'm telling you're gorgeous you're smart you're independent you're wonderful I don't speak that way to myself. I don't speak life into myself. I don't uplift myself. I'm looking in the mirror and criticizing myself for every little mistake I've made, for every little imperfection on my body. And I just, I want to leave that behind in 2023. I just want to speak life into myself. Reading romance is not cheesy. Me prioritizing my mental health is not selfish. I may have gained a lot of weight since the pandemic, but I still look beautiful. Those positive thoughts are what I want to bring in 2023, and I am done talking negatively to myself. I want to uplift myself like I uplift others, and yeah. I know that sounds kind of cheesy, and I'm going to end the video on that one because I think that's the last question. It definitely is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I kind of went on a rant at the end and I didn't think it was going to turn in this way but I think what I want to say is you guys are so important and you are worth value and taking time for yourself so make sure to do that in 2023. I'm definitely going to work on it. I know it sounds really easy when I'm saying it. I know it's definitely not but you guys are wonderful. I'm wonderful. We're all wonderful. Anyways, I love you guys. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. Make sure to check out Jessen's video, which I will leave down below. Jessen, thank you for creating this tag. It's wonderful. As always, thank you for taking time out of your day to spend with me. It means the world to me. I hope you guys are all staying happy and healthy, and I will see you guys next time. I almost forgot my intro. I can't even. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.